What's up, Paper Gang? My name is Paper YGO, and welcome back to another deck profile video on the channel. I am here with a dear friend of mine, a competitive duelist, and a Yu Gi Tuber himself, Yu Gi Oh! Replays. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing wonderful, man. It is so great to have you here. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your deck profile with us. This is the deck profile that Replays took to the GG for free as of last week of the recording of this video. And uh, he did get first place, and he won the beautiful playmat, courtesy of Imperial Gaming Collectibles, my sponsor. Big shout out to them, Art, Alex, Tiger. You know you guys are the best. Check them out. Link down in the description down below for all of your TCG needs and accessories. Replays, just uh, give us a little uh, explanation of the deck that you played and why you chose to play it. Yeah, so I guess this will far this will fall excuse me into two parts uh one the prank brave engine that has been really sort of terrorizing the format as of recently and then the other cards that really have not been terrorized the format <laughs> as of recently uh you know all these really board breakers and um yeah so i you know obviously the prank brave engine in my opinion is one is just so oppressive it's so powerful it's so consistent going first or going second it really does it all uh, from what i've seen and then i guess for the other cards the board breakers we'll approach we'll, we'll talk about those as we go through the profile Sounds great, man. And yeah, I mean, you can see right off the bat, you've got some really spicy choices in here. Uh, yeah. We're going to get into those a little bit. But yeah, without further ado, let's break it down. So it looks like you are playing the DPU package. So you've got the Celestial and the Dasher, of course. And then uh, for the prank lineup, you've got three of each of the kids. Um, I'm curious. So you see a lot of builds not playing the three Roxies. Instead, they opt for two. So I'm curious, yeah. why did you play three? Well, so I would say that with the, your amount of names, it really comes down to your sort of deck size because deck size in this format is not like sort of stock in stone, right? You know, we've had formats where people, I mean, realistically in the past, people say, oh, 40 only, you know, we had like one little blip where it's like 37, right, with the upstarts, but, you know. Um, but, but right now in today's day and age, you know, I, I think uh, that's something that's not very set in stone right now. I remember at the Goofy Gauntlet 2, I mean, people were literally asking each other deck sizes because it, it kind of mattered but like point being is that there actually was a reason to ask right? right and so because my deck is 60 cards i feel very fine with running the three of everything and then the terraforming and then you also have the backup plans of like the place and the set rotation for like you know worst case scenario right yeah basically you were just you know you were saying you know if i'm gonna play 60 i'm gonna go for as much consistency as possible so yeah and, and essentially essentially it really just comes down to the ratios right like the number 60 shouldn't really mean anything to you it should mean or like to the player watching right uh it should just come down to the ratios and the ratios of finding your starter work tremendously well <laughs> absolutely uh moving on so you did play the brave engine alongside of it which of course is the is the engine that's terrorizing our format right now with the one rider the three girl uh the three right aramis here down at the bottom as you can see and uh, it looks like you chose to play one fateful and one draco back so this is all pretty standard i'm just curious uh, what led you to play just one fateful adventure because you do see two in a lot of lists. yeah yeah no for sure for sure and i would just say that the second doesn't come up to the extent that i would want to put it in i understand that some people do have it and i would say you know to them more more power to you <laughs> but um you know if if that does come up i would be open to putting it in but as of now it has not so this reflects that Perfect. Now for the very next card that we see after the Water Enchantress, oh, man, this is a card, <laughs> there we go, this is a card that really came up big uh, when I was commentating your final match in the yeah, GG for yeah. free. Uh, talk, to, talk to us about why you wanted to play uh, Book of Eclipse and Book of Moon in the main deck in this deck. Oh my gosh, so these cards, these cards are, uh, I, I just love them, I, I love, as you say, I love them with all my heart, the, like these cards are so crazy, man, <laughs> these are crazy. So the way that you want to think about like these books here is that going first it's essentially just a generic trap card right which is you know fine right but then going second you're essentially guaranteeing that you get the one for one right and this sort of goes into the debate of hand traps versus these types of cards and obviously you know 99 percent of the format or players within the format will say oh hand traps are better because xyz right and i mean, I, I personally think that these going second spells like book of moon and book of eclipse i, I think these are just so much more powerful because I mean, obviously, this will relate to some of these other cards as well, but they, what I would say is that they always have a use, right? So when you look at some hand traps, you know, they have a high probability probably of coming up, right? If you talk like an Ash Blossom, a Ghost Ogre, a Valor, Imperm, right? I mean, they, these are cards that are very realistic to come up. Maybe you call them like 80%, you know, because there could be a world where, oh, my Ghost Spell doesn't come up, right? Or I don't know. It's, it's, tell me if this ever happened to you before. You, you, uh, you know, 
play it out, don't have a hand trap, go, uh, you go second, draw Valor, right? So you're like, All the time. Well, 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 that's helpful, you know? So, um, you know, book, having quick play spells obviously helps in that regard. But um, yeah, no, I mean, just the fact that with these types of cards, like they do have games where they don't come up. And then if you go down the curve, if you're talking like a main deck Ghost Reaper, which I, I don't think people are many, but, you know, say, say you main some of more of these really power cards that are a bit more conditional, then it's even less likely for them to come up, right? When you have a card like Book of Eclipse or Book of Moon, they're always going to come up because your opponent will be summoning monsters. And especially in this current format, you know, if they're going for that Cybers, um, the, the gadget guy or the Cybers gadget, they go for a prank name, they go for any of these cards that will lead into a Link 1. You know, just flip it over and call it a day. Or if they want to put out Omni Negates and you're going second, hey, we can just tr trade with your Barone, trade with the Savage, you know, uh, just and then continue to play from there. I definitely think this was a really great meta call, uh, especially in the GG for free. Um, yeah, it came up big for you, as we saw before. And I, I really liked how you broke that down for us there uh, with your explanation. So this is something that I might test out of my own deck uh, going down because it, it seemed like it did yeah. a lot for you. <laughs> oh, it, it, no, it, it's insane. And the one thing I would say, and um, I might be just jumping like the horse a little bit here but it, going this line i would say i i objectively just think it's better but what i would say from a realistic standpoint is that it really and this is actually partly why i enjoy the deck so much is because it makes you think like a lot and i know i know the first comment is gonna be oh there, but there's mystic mind what do you mean and it's like okay well <laughs> you know can you can't let's like what i would say to that person is like can you tell me like which decks have the main deck out for mystic mind right, right. and it's like this is a deck that really rewards having game knowledge and it rewards really being like critical of your opponent's board, what they're going to do. And because essentially every game that you're going second is almost like a puzzle that you have to like, you know, kind of like deconstruct their board and like try to like build your own. Right. So I would say it's um, definitely tougher than just ogring the faithful or, you know, uh, but uh, if you really put the time into it, this is like just so powerful. Absolutely. And uh, moving on from there, you did play the one called by, which of course, you know, should be in everyone's deck. Uh, the three cosmic, just to, like you said, deal with things like the mine and the main deck and to also deal with things like Draco back and the pandemonium, if you can hit it, if you get lucky enough. I think uh, cosmic is going to be seeing a resurgence in our metagame as well. Yeah. Um, also, also, if I mention here, uh, yeah. Cyclone, you know, obviously we've seen sort of Scythe beyond the decline as of recently. But I mean, still, still relevant for that. I had a game once where you know someone goes, "Okay, DP, all right, chain cosmic." Like you know, right. it uh, works. And then also very helpful for just other random like sort of missile. I, I don't want to call it miscellaneous because I feel like that might be a little too rude. But um, you know, I guess I could say more. The strategies we don't see too often, right? Like I can hit choochies and all these types of just types of cards. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think that was a really good call, and especially in the GG for free, you see a lot of rogue strategies because we do have the bounty decks as well. Um, so yeah, that's that was probably a great call. I'm sure that came up a lot for you in the tournament. We covered the uh, the adventurer package. You also are playing the foolish for the girls. Now here is something that's very contentious. So I, I I do see the three chalice and the three droplet. Droplet is obviously a very highly contentious card. We can go on for days about why that should or shouldn't be in the main deck. But I'm curious uh, why you decided to play three chalice as well, and if that came up big for you in the tournament. The theory behind chalice and droplet are essentially the same that fall behind the book of moon and eclipse and you know so, some of these are better than others some of them are a little bit more similar right like i like for example like you see the two eclipse like obviously um i, I think eclipse is a little worse than moon and like chalice and droplet I, you know eclipse is the type of card where it's it's kind of just <laughs> if you're activating it it comes across very much like a zeus where it's like th this is my last resort like if you can go past this uh you, like you got it right so uh, that's, that's essentially like the theory behind like an eclipse but like so when we're talking cards like chalice and droplet i mean it, it, just like for chalice for example right i'll start with this because it's like very straightforward it's like you know the battle effect you're, you're not really using that obviously uh going second it just will eat a one for one every single time if i want to hit like a chi Zhao, hit a long un i mean whatever the case may be right this will stop it if there's a barone i'll negate it right uh dp neg it's you know uh very very clean one for one and then you know if you're going first it's totally fine though it's not like a dark ruler because we just put it down and now it's a trap card right so uh for droplet you said this one was contentious you said I think so. I mean, a, lo a lot of people that I've that I've spoken to are kind of arguing about whether or not it should be in the main deck. I think that it's great in the main deck, obviously, because mm. it gets over a lot of stuff. But yeah, how do yeah. you feel about this card? Obviously, I would say for game one, if you're going second, <laughs> I mean, this thing is crazy. This is just beautiful, right? Especially what makes some like a card like this, and I think this is like the same theory behind like Magician Souls, is that 
when you're playing Praying Brave, you just have so many random cards just sitting there for free, right? Like, you're going to have your field a lot of the time. You're going to have, like, a Draco back that might be unused. Um, you know, extra Fateful you don't care about. Like, these are just cards that you're going to just have chilling in your hand or, like, an extra right or something, right? Uh, which just makes Droplet even more crazier. Now, the one... Like, so, if we're going second, just, you know, I would say beautiful. Just, I, I have zero complaints. Because normally when I'm playing a game, right, I'm, I may have to have, like, two or three of these, right? I may need a Book of Moon and a Chalice and, like, a Water, you know, to break a board, right? But when I have Droplet, it doesn't matter what those other two are. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And so, I mean, I, I just very, very powerful in that regard. Obviously, having the attack um, with contrast to, like, the 400 attack, the having is, like, very, very huge, right? Yeah. So it's like, if, if I, like, the plus 400 is nothing to win, I can take a Barone and put it to 15, right? right? Like, that's just, that's crazy in my eyes. The one argument I would sort of concede for why Droplet isn't the best is because when you do go first, it's not the best trap card because you are kind of having to like concede resources when your opponent is already working to dwindle your resources down. But I would just say that overall, I mean, it's so versatile, it's so powerful. When because uh, you know, one of the big points I wanted to really make distinct in this profile is that the sort of concept of how often a card can come up, and I, I think that's I think it's a boring part of the game, but I think it's a very important part of the game. And a card like Drop It will always be useful. That kind of seems like a theme in your deck, right? Just playing cards that are always going to be useful, and I, and I can definitely respect that. So moving on, you got the two Fusion Destiny and the Instant Fusion, of course, the Destiny being part of the DPE package and the Instant Fusion helping you out to get a monster on board for your prank plays. Uh, I think Mystic Mine is definitely something that I want you to talk about, because with, <laughs> with Draco back being such a big card oh. in the format, uh, you know, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of cool that you were able to incorporate this. So tell me how mm. this came up for you. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, Draco back is obviously the biggest argument to why you shouldn't play this. But, you know, it's like the, the times that my opponent ends on an actual Draco back and, like, that type of situation that you, like, your that situation that you just said, I mean, that is quite literally, like, the nightmare scenario, right? Like, it's so terrible, you know, it's just, you get gamed right there, <laughs> you know, people laugh at you, it's just, you know, it's a terrible situation to be in for everyone involved. Um, but that sort of horror story, like, it's it's a very big outlier and it doesn't come up as much as I think players would like to imagine. I mean, so let, let me make something abundantly clear, right? I think this card should be banned. It is completely against what the game is meant to be, in my opinion, but they gave it to us, so I'm, I'm going to use it, okay? So, <laughs> um, yeah, no, so I mean, essentially, you have a card where, with Mystic Mind, if we're going second, I mean, going first, obviously, it's not doing anything, right? And we side, we side that out in going first games, but for going second, it essentially reads to me like another Book of Moon or another Chalice where it's like, you know, it, you're going to have to stop this unless you have the main deck out that isn't, like, Cosmic or something, right? Like, if I know my opponent is on... Flanderies, right? Okay, well, I know now that they have the wins and that they can out this thing very, very easily, right? And then I, I can't take that line because they have, assuming that my player is like, has like very decent game knowledge, they'll know that, okay, I gotta get to my wins and then I OTK this guy, right? And this is sort of going back to what I was saying where the game knowledge is very, very helpful, right? Like if I'm playing against a Sword Soul, I can know, okay, let's just not put anything in my back row. I can't get blackouted, and then, you know, we proceed from there. Right. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, there, there will be some of these crazy situations. One thing I would like to say with this card is that with DPE, like, it, it is l just not fair. It is not fair. <laughs> it's so stupid. Because <laughs> you'll, you'll essentially be in these game states, right, where I have the mine, your board is, like, completely stacked. I go for the DPE, and then turn after turn... Um, it's just like pop, 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 right? And then out of nowhere, I have five back row. You just have cards in your hand. And then I have a full hand and full field with a DPE. And then it's just like, it's a kill, right? Just right. instantly, right? right? And I mean, especially once you factor in like time rule, it's just, oh, it's so, pro it's, it's so problematic. And then it, even if you can't get to the fusion destiny, say something went like terribly wrong, like you don't have access. I mean, worst case scenario, you can try to run, um, like you can try to do the loop. Obviously, players can kind of like stop that if they can just get one mod on board, which is very realistic. Um, whereas like DP is just so slippery where it's, you know, it's just so hard to get around. But uh, yeah, no, overall, Mystic Mine is just so broken. And I think once you learn how to use it correctly and use it as a real like going second tool, I, I think it's very powerful. And should be bad. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I, I might agree with you on that. I go back and forth on this all the time with my friends. But, um, yeah, I love how you broke down exactly how uh, this card functions in this deck. And um, I'm glad it came in clutch for you. And like you said, as long as it's in the game, we'll be abusing it. So I want to get into your uh, consistency card. So I think we can all justify playing Prosperity in this deck because you're not really drawing any cards. Um, but I think 
I think desires is more the one that I want you to elaborate on because you are Ooh. playing the D, the DPE package. So basically, <clears throat> if you're going to resolve this, you're risking uh, getting rid of that entire engine. So how did this yeah, so, come up for you? Yeah, <laughs> I, re I remember you mentioning this on the stream, and uh, you know, as uh, one of the other guys on the call said, you know, it's like when you're playing a sixty card deck, the chances of that happening go kind of down. And I, I would say with a card like desires, this is not your main. Like, this is not, like, start of M1, activate Desires, right? Like, you you really, realistically are not going to be doing this. Desires is a card where, you know, if I open kind of suboptimal, say I go Dropsies, Meow, you Ash, that, that's where I'm going to usually break the pot, and then I just have to, like, hope I can get somewhere. And unfortunately for the opponent, a lot of time, a lot of the times you can, right? <laughs> like, you'll, like, you'll just stumble across the water, you'll stumble across the Fusion Destiny. And, um, I mean, is it possible that you can knock out one of your pieces? obviously right you know very clear problem but um as a tool for either like i said for a sort of point a you know like just worst case scenario let's pop the desires and see what we can find and then for sort of point b where you already got through your combo and then you can activate it you know i understand that's a little bit win mori but it comes up there as well, so you know, might as well use it. Of course, you got the one pandemonium in the three place. That's pretty standard for for prankless. Uh, wrapping up there with the uh, other spells that are in the brave engine as well, which we touched on. The serotation and the terraforming, pretty standard because you want to see your field spells, and you can of course play the serotation because you play the mystic mind. So that's really nice. Um, and triple tactics talent. It's a card that I've been seeing coming in and out of the format. So I I'm curious why you chose to play this card and how it worked for you. Yeah, so this is essentially, you know, like, like I, you know, I'll come back over and over to this because I think it's so important, the concept of how often a card can, can come up, right? So obviously, with a card like TTT, this is something that you want to use going first, right? Like, like you can use it going second, right? Like, like it generally will eat the Barone egg, right? Like, if I say, hey, can I have your Barone? They'll say, no. It's a very versatile tool, and I struggle, like, unless you're playing against, like, literal, like, tr like, trap trap, like, Eldritch, I mean, TTT is a card that will always come up and that kind of just, you know, like I, I keep saying here, it circles back to this concept of how often will this card actually be able to put in work, right? Especially with a with a format that's just inundated with hand traps. Uh, this card oh, is... Oh, I mean, absolutely. That, I was going to make that point as well. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> and speaking of hand traps, you got the three Imperm, uh, which we see go in and out of uh, contention, basically. Uh, you don't really see it in lists like based because it's not a tuner, but it is a, a card that can put in a lot of work. And yeah, so course, es essentially yeah. with like Imperm, this is kind of just like a better Chalice. In my opinion, so it just has to make the cut. And then Metaverse is just like, you know... <laughs> Yeah, you just get to see mine more, <laughs> basically. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, now, getting into the side. So there's basically mm. only one card in this side deck that I want you to oh, touch on. The I, rest... I wonder which one that one's going to be. <laughs> well, let's let's start with you have the three Judge, the one Pank, Duster, uh, three Lightning Storm, three Evenly, and Reboot. I think these are all just great side deck cards for different scenarios. But then, of course, yeah. at the beginning of your side deck, you've got three Exchange. So I wanted to, I want to know, like, what was your intention with this card uh -oh, and how gosh. did it play for you? So, you know, obviously this is going to be one of your going first cards and, you know, going into this, um, I mean, well, I'm not going to say going into this, but as, as I've practiced or practiced and tested with my friends and whatnot, this card is just going first is so, it's, it's insane. It's just insanity, right? So essentially you get multiple things, right? You get to rip the most powerful card out of your opponent's hand and when you're going second, they're usually going to have a couple tools as well to match you, right? Um, because, you know, I'm going to be putting in my judgments and my exchange and they might put in, you know, whatever, whatever they want to try to deal with me, deal with me, right? Like the twin twister or whatever they want, right? So when you go exchange here, not only do you get all the information in their opponent's hand, I mean, we, we've seen time and time again in the Yu-Gi-Oh! metagame where just having hand knowledge is so critical, right? Whether it be cards like Red Lotus or Aqua Dolphin, right? I mean, this, this is just... um. A game mechanic that is so insane because it essentially gives you right there it gives you a guidebook on how to play the next turn and to take the game you know what, you know what i mean right, right. It, it just tells you like okay well i'll hit this i'll hit this i'll just uh reconstruct my turn so where i go into this right so it's like I, and then so your other question was did it come up and the answer would be absolutely yes someone got very upset about this and i, I can't blame them so <laughs> um I, I was playing against um like pure trap outlet right mm -hmm. And uh, game one, I mean, they win. The, the deck is just better than every other deck. Game one, right? right. Uh, but, but the problem is that game two and three, you know, they're, they're going to have to deal with the 15 cards in the side deck, right? So I, I go into game two. I pop the exchange. I check his hand. It's four trap cards and a lava golem, okay? Oh, I wonder what I'll be taking. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, then game three, I just get the evenly on him. So it's like, you know, it's like exchange is one of these cards where it's so, so insane. Also, the reason this works so well is because 
get this right you don't have hand traps to give them and you can literally pick what to give them right so a lot of the times i mean it might sound uh, kind of like funny but it, it's really true and really good when you can just take the drago back that you don't need going first and say here you go here, here's a you know a yoshi you know enjoy right. <laughs> and, uh, or it's like you know most of the time mo i mean most of the time realistically you'll just be giving them a prank name which is like okay well you're playing sword soul like what are you gonna do with the fantasies right it's right. like you know um so i mean overall uh very very good and i would say is just another reminder that um it's 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 acceptable and i would probably encourage looking for hidden text because i think it's not only very fun but it's also it also can come up just so amazing <laughs> absolutely man i think that was a really interesting choice and i have seen this card uh in a few games that i played recently and um yeah it can put in a lot of work as you as you've been saying about this whole deck like you you just built this deck to to play cards that always are going to put in work and exchange certainly is one of yeah them. moving on to the extra deck it looks like you've got the dpe the butler the rocket the washer one meow two link spider three cockadoodle do uh the one bow wow verte uh you've got a unicorn and i forget this guy's name Oh, Roar and uh, Rip Roar and Roaster, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the one access code. So I think that I would say this is pretty standard for a pranks list, but is there anything that you'd like to touch on or elaborate on with this actually? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the first 14, and not like literally first 14 on the list, right? But the first 14 are like absolutely non negotiable. Like, I mean, it just, you got kind of got to do it, right? I mean, right like two doodle like i just don't know why you would do that to yourself right, right. <laughs> but um no so i get anyways just like the 15th card is the second link spider and this is a debate that me and uh, some of my friends have been going back and forth on and essentially it came down to it where we thought that um the instance of you know getting nibbed and then having the pranks to go ahead and make another token and go for another spider and then you know dp your opponent uh that comes up more often than the grind game will where you will have the second bow will come up right and you know obviously it's a little sliver of games but um yeah i just wanted to point that out because i think it's important absolutely and yeah and like you said the the rest of the cards are pretty much non-negotiable it's how the deck functions and um you know as we mentioned before you did win the gg for free last week so it, it must have done pretty well for you the way it is <laughs> and uh you know i'm hoping that you can get your hands on this so we can play uh play a real game in real life i'd love to oh, see oh man that would be so much fun <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of course uh you know you can pretty much buy a car or this deck so take your pick <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you said it best man you said it best i want to say from the bottom of my heart thank you so much i love you and i appreciate that you shared this deck with us if you want to compete in the gg for free the link is down in the description down below to logan jya's discord go ahead and join the discord we'd love to have you there every wednesday night 6 30 p.m est we do conduct the gg for free and i'm sure you'll see replays in another one of those we give away prizes we give away play mats and packs every single week so be sure to check that out replays is there anything that you like to say before we wrap this oh video absolutely up? absolutely you know shout out you i and shout out logan as well you know so i you know i really wanted to give a little thank you to the whole gg for free thing because personally, you know, I don't think it's very unreasonable to say that uh, affording this type of deck in person is like really like it's it's not that realistic. OK, <laughs> like right. you know, I, understandably so. Like, you know, if you have a career and you're like, OK, you know, I, I understand. Right. But for, for a good chunk of us, you know, whether or not we're still in college or we're working like some other different type of job where this isn't very realistic to purchase, you know, having this sort of outlet to actually play competitively in a tournament form is so, so important. I, I've told this to Logan before. I, I think this is very important what you guys are doing. And uh, I just, you know, I really hope it continues and it is a place that I will continue to go for the near future to, uh, you know, practice and become a better player. Absolutely, man. Well, thank you so much for your kind words and for promoting the GG for free as well. Uh, as you know very very well, I do appreciate you and all that you do. Be sure to drop this guy a sub on his channel, Yu-Gi-Oh! Replays. The link is always in the description down below in all of my videos, so you can go check him out. He does analysis of Yu-Gi-Oh! Replays as well as metagame breakdowns and also some comedy as well, which I, which I love. So, uh, Replays, thank you so much for being on the channel. As always, my name is PaperYGO. Stay getting that paper, and I will see you in the next video. Every time we go